Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about sterilization and disinfection. So let's jump right into the video. Introduction. The purpose of sterilization and disinfection procedures is to prevent microbes transmission to the patients. Both prevent the spread of infectious diseases and uh, both can eradicate or lower the presence of pathogenic microorganisms. Lecture outline as we are done with introduction, now we'll be looking at sterilization and its method, disinfection and its method, then antiseptics and we'll also have a look at difference between the disinfectants and antiseptics and we'll also have a deep look at the rate of killing of microbes and at the end as usual we'll review the lecture. Sterilization. It is a killing or removal of all the microbes including bacterial spores which are highly resistant. Sterilization is usually carried out by autoclaving which consists of exposure to steam at 121 degrees celsius under the pressure of 15 pound force per square inch for 15 minutes. Surgical instruments that can be damaged by moist heat are usually sterilized by exposure to ethylene oxide gas and moist intravenous solutions are sterilized by filtration. We are going to have a look at the methods, don't worry. Sterilization has got two methods. Number one are the physical methods, which is further classified into filtration, heat, and radiation. Number two are the chemical methods, which are further classified into modification of nucleic acids, disruption of cell membrane, and modification of proteins. Let's look at the physical ones first. Physical methods. In physical methods, we use physical agents. They act either by imparting energy in the form of heat or radiation or by removing the organ through filtration. Let's look at heat first. Heat energy can be applied in three ways. In the form of moist heat either by boiling or autoclaving or dry heat or by pasteurization. In general, heat kills by denaturing proteins but membrane damage and enzymatic cleavage of DNA may also be involved. Moist heat sterilizes at a lower temperature than dry heat. Moist heat sterilization, usually autoclaving, is the most frequently used method of sterilization and it is done at a temperature of 121 degrees celsius and is held for 15 minutes or 20 minutes at that temperature if you want to test the effectiveness of autoclaving process performing organisms such as membranes of genus clostridium um, we can use these organisms for that purpose sterilization by dry heat on the other hand requires temperature in the range of 180 degrees celsius for two hours this process is used primarily for glassware and is used less frequently than autoclaving third one is pasteurization which is used primarily for milk and it consists of heating milk to 62 degrees celsius for 30 minutes followed by rapid cooling this is sufficient to kill the vegetative cells of the milk borne pathogens in dry heat um, you can see i've written red heat flaming incineration and hot air oven let's talk about filtration filtration is the preferred method of sterilizing certain solutions for example those with heat sensitive components solutions are filtered to make them pyrogen free prior to autoclaving. The most commonly used filter is composed of nitrocellulose and has a pore size of 0.22 mm. This size will retain all bacteria and spores. Filters work by physically trapping particles larger than the pore size and by retaining somewhat smaller particles via electrostatic attraction of the particles to the filters. Radiation the two types of radiations used to kill microorganisms are non-ionizing ones, which include infrared and UE, and the ionizing ones, which include X-rays and the gamma rays. Radiations such as ultraviolet light and X radiations is often used to sterilize heat sensitive items. Ultraviolet light and X radiation kill by damaging DNA. The second method of sterilization is the chemical methods. Chemical agents act primarily by one of the three mechanisms. The first one is disruption of lipid containing cell membranes. Second one is modification of proteins and the third one is modification of DNA, the nucleic acid. Let's start talking about the disruption of cell membranes. Number one is alcohol. Ethanol is widely used to clean the skin before immunization or venipuncture. It acts mainly by disorganizing the lipid structure in membranes, but it denatures proteins as well. Ethanol requires the presence of water for maximal activity. 70% ethanol is often used as an antiseptic to clean the skin prior to venipuncture. Ethanol will not kill bacterial spores and therefore cannot be used for sterilization. 
Number two are detergents. Detergents are surface active agents composed of a long chain lipid soluble hydrophobic portion and a polar hydrophilic group which can be a cation anion or a non-ionic group these surfactants interact with the lipid in the cell membrane through their hydrophobic chain and with the surrounding water through their polar group and thus disrupt the membrane Number three, phenols. Phenol was the first disinfectant used in the operating room, but it is rarely used as a disinfectant today because it is too caustic. Chlorohexidine is a chlorinated phenol that is widely used as a hand disinfectant prior to surgery and in the cleaning of wound. Phenols not only damage membranes but also denature proteins. Let's talk about the modification of nucleic acid. A variety of dyes not only stain microorganisms but also inhibit their growth. One of these is crystal violet, which is an antiseptic used to treat fungal infections of the skin. Its action is based on binding of the positively charged dye molecule to the negatively charged phosphate groups of the nucleic acids. Malachite green, a triphenylamine dye like crystal violet, is a component of Lowenstein Jensen's medium, which is used to grow mycobacterium tuberculosis. The dye inhibits the growth of unwanted organisms in this sputum during the six week incubation period. Now, let's have a look at modification of proteins. Chlorine is used as a disinfectant to purify the water supply and to treat swimming pools. Iodine. It is the most effective skin antiseptic used in medical practice and should be used prior to obtaining a blood culture and installing intravenous catheters because contamination with skin flora such as staphylococcus epidermidis can be a problem. Iodine, like chlorine, is an oxidant that inactivates sulfhydryl containing enzymes. Iodine is supplied in two forms, tinctured of iodine and iodophores. The third ones are heavy metals. Mercury and silver have the greatest antibacterial activity of heavy metals and are the most widely used in medicine. They act by binding to sulfhydryl groups thereby blocking enzymatic activity. Fourth one in the list is hydrogen peroxide. It is used as an antiseptic to clean wounds. Its effectiveness is limited by the organism's ability to produce catalase, an enzyme that degrades hydrogen peroxide. Next one in the list is formaldehyde and glutaraldehyde. Formaldehyde, which is available as a 37% solution in water, formalin, it denatures proteins and nucleic acids while glutaraldehyde, which has two reactive aldehyde groups, is 10 times more effective than formaldehyde and is less toxic. It is used to utilize respiratory therapy equipment, endoscopes, and hemodialysis equipment. Next one in the list is ethylene oxide. The ethylene oxide gas is used extensively for sterilization of heat-sensitive material, such as surgical instruments and plastics. It kills by alkylating both proteins and nucleic acids. The last one in the list are acids and alkalis. Strong acids and alkalis kill by denaturing proteins. Disinfection. It is the killing of many but not all microorganisms. For adequate disinfection, pathogens must be killed, but some organisms and bacterial spores may survive. Disinfectants vary in their tissue damaging properties from the corrosive phenol containing compounds, which should be used only on inanimate objects, to less toxic materials such as ethanol and iodine which can be used on the skin surfaces. Now let's look at the methods of disinfection. The physical methods of disinfection is similar to that of the sterilization method, but the chemical methods are different. Chemical methods include disinfectants, which include bleach, which is a disinfectant that kills bacteria and viruses by oxidizing their cell membranes. Then we've got hydrogen peroxide and alcohol. Then in antiseptics, we've got iodine, chlorhexidine, and hydrogen peroxide. There are some biological methods in disinfection. Number one, the bacteriophages. Bacteriophage is a type of virus that infects and replicates within bacteria and the enzymes. You guys might be familiar with enzymes. These are biological catalysts that speed up any process. Now let's have a look at antiseptics. These are the chemicals that are used to kill microorganisms and inhibit their growth. They are applied on living tissues such as skin and mucous membranes. They work by disrupting the cell membranes, denaturing the proteins, interfering with the metabolic processes of microorganisms, and leading to their death or inactivation. 
for example a hand sanitizer. The most dramatic part of the video is here. It is the disinfectants versus antiseptics. Disinfectants and antiseptics both are used to kill microorganisms but what's the difference? The difference is that disinfectants kill microorganisms on known living surfaces like a table as you can see in this picture and antiseptics kill microorganisms on living surfaces like skin or hand as you can see in this picture. Disinfectants are stronger than antiseptics. For example, a detergent is stronger than a hand sanitizer, which means that antiseptics are weaker than disinfectants. Disinfectants are not safer for use on living things, like you can't use a detergent prior to a mini puncture, but you can use an antiseptic to do so. So, antiseptics are safe to use on living things. The technical part of today's video is the rate of killing of the microorganisms. The death of microorganisms occurs at a certain rate and that is dependent primarily on two variables. The concentration of killing agent and the length of time the agent is applied, I mean the time of application of the agent. The rate of killing is defined by the relationship and is directly proportional to 1 over CT. This equation is showing and the number of surviving organisms which is inversely proportional to the concentration of the agent C and to the time of application of the agent that is T and collectively CT is referred to as the dose. If I say alternatively the number of microorganisms killed is directly proportional to CT, the dose. The relationship is usually stated in terms of survivors because they are easily measured by colony formation. Let's review everything really quick. Sterilization, it is the killing or removal of microbes including spores. Disinfection, it is the killing of many but not all microbes. Disinfectants, these kill microbes but on non-living things like a table. Antiseptics, these kill microbes but on living things like skin. And the rate of killing microbes is n is directly proportional to 1 over ct, where n is the number of surviving organisms, c is the concentration of the killing agent and T is the time of application of that agent and CT is referred to as dose. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You've learned something. If you really did, give this video a big big thumbs up. Comment down below in the comment section. And also if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram, I've got my Twitter and I do upload blogs. And I'll catch you soon. Till then, Assalamu Alaikum.